Hi. Up to now we have seen uh, buck converter, boost converter and buck boost converter. But, you know, these not the only topologies and actually these, you know, three are the basic building blocks of many other topologies as well. So today I would like to mention a few variants uh, for those topologies. The first one that we will see is the non-inverting buck boost converter. I mean, if you remember it from the last lecture, we have we have the buck uh, buck boost converter. But again, you know, it it can be a disadvantage or sometimes not. And if this is your you know zero ground or the main ground, the output voltage you know uh, produces a negative voltage. So either you can define the load ground as here or if you are using the same uh, ground that means you have a negative voltage with respect to your input voltage again you know it can be uh, problematic for uh, some applications and actually there is a non-inverting version for that buck boost converter and the topology is uh, slightly more complex i mean to start with we have uh, two switches and two diodes so we just added you know one uh, extra diode and one extra switch and the idea is you know uh, this topology is quite flexible and um, first uh, operating mode is you can run it as a normal uh, buck boost converter but now the output is not inverting but then you have the same polarity so all that thing is the common ground for the input and output so the idea is uh, you can uh, turn on and turn off uh, both of these switches uh, simultaneously. So let's look at what will happen when we just turn on. So you have a direct contact here and that one is also short circuited. So what you have is you still have the same idea. You are still you know, charging up uh, that inductor and through that supply voltage. But of course, you know, one of the disadvantage as you can see here is instead of our current going through one uh, switch it is going through two series switches so it increases our conduction losses so from the efficiency point of view you know that is uh, less advantage that has a disadvantage uh, compared to normal buck boost converter so anyway so we now charge our inductor so our IL has reached to some point now we are turning off turning off that switches so at the same time so now we just close that one and we just close that one I mean turn off so now we had some current here and again as you can see I mean it is the same idea you are charging the inductor and then you are sending it to capacitor to charge and that current now has only way to pass through that direction okay and here we have again the same issue so we have one diode and the second diode so that current is flowing through two series connected diodes so that means you will have twice of the conduction losses also in the diode case but at the end of the day you know if the polarity of the voltage is important uh, basically you can get uh, you know the same polarity with respect to load voltage and again let me clean up that, these parts and you do that you know just to you know, summarize again you do that first you know charging your inductor through here so this is on state and then you are discharging that one through here okay and this is the off uh, state okay so this can be run as a non-inverting uh, buck boost converter and actually I advise you to have a look at that uh, reading material so you can uh, see some design tips for an efficient non-inverting buck boost converter because as you can see you have some disadvantages in terms of the uh, conduction losses so you need to be careful about uh, component selection so you need to be, uh, you need to choose uh, efficient MOSFETs and efficient diodes to get a overall uh, satisfying efficiency but actually that topology is uh, quite flexible so that can be used as a you know buck converter so what you can do is you can turn QT Q2 this is uh, Q2 let's you know 
disable that one and actually if you look at the topology now it is identical let me draw it here so in this let me not draw it there but let's draw it here so if you recall the topology of a bug converter okay so once you disable once you disable that switch so now we have that switch it is uh, our input that is that diode that is that L so by disabling you know that's Q2 completely and you can control D1 and suddenly you have a buck converter you know okay then you can actually operate it as a boost converter here and for boost converter you can uh, connect that one and what you have here is you have you know that is completely uh, connected and that diode is now connected to that uh, positive uh, voltage source and it is completely off as well so what you have is you know that topology which is the same circuit as a buck converter okay so by closing uh, i mean turning on that q1 completely and controlling qt q2 you can have a boost converter so that topology okay that is not only a, a non-inverting buck boost converter it can operate as a, a buck converter it can operate as a boost converter and it can operate as a buck boost uh, converter as well so again you know depending on your uh, depending on your input and output voltage range it gives you you know more flexibility again if you are working with a you know limited uh, voltage range and let's say if your uh, circuit is op always operating as a as a uh, boost range then it is more efficient and more cost effective to use a fixed uh, boost converter but let's say i don't know your input voltage is changing from uh, 9 to 28 volts and you want a 15 volts output okay so in this case you know again you can operate either in the buck boost mode or boost mode uh, sorry uh, buck mode or boost mode so technically you can use a you know buck boost converter inverting or non-inverting but sometimes it is more flexible depending on your duty cycles it can be more flexible and in the overall it can be more efficient uh, to run for example if your output input voltage reaches up up to 28 volts you can switch that topology to operate as a buck converter or when it is down to 9 volts then you can change the topology to uh, operate as a boost converter and actually you can go even further okay for that topology so here we have the diodes okay again depending on the you know forward voltage and current carrying capacity of those diodes it can be more efficient to replace those two diodes with a MOSFET or another switch as well so this is a generalized version so it's called four switch buck boost converter so now instead of you know with the previous one instead of using uh, separate diodes you have a MOSFET here as well so another MOSFET another MOSFET here as well so the disadvantages the uh, control difficult to that now you have to generate like four you know gate signals for that topology but again there are some uh, ready integrated circuits with that topology so all the gate drives are included you know all the MOSFETs can be included or it can be added uh, separately but at the end of the day so once you have that topology you can operate it in the back mode similar to previous one so you can uh, disable that one and you know you can turn on that one so once you have that one so this can be operated like like a synchronous buck converter so you can you know turn on and off uh, alternatively those switches or you can go to the boost mo mode and in that one q1 is off i uh, sorry on and q2 is off okay so once you have that topology then you uh, left with q3 and q4 and once you turn on the q3 
so it charges the inductor and then it sends it back here so it is like a synchronous uh, boost converter or again you can operate it as a you know buck boost mode and you know you can turn on and off q1 and q3 together and q3 and q4 together so it can also work as a non-inverting um, buck boost converter depending on your topology as you can see you know there are you know many different uh, possibilities in connection of those uh, basically diodes or MOSFETs inductance and capacitors and you can connect them in different ways to get uh, different characteristics and let's look at the uh, input and output noise levels okay that is also important thing and once you are uh, designing uh, the output filters the capacitances and also if you look at the EMI uh, constraints they can have you know different characteristics let's say you have a you know buck topology let's say you have a uh, buck topology and here you have the switch which you can control you have the diode you have the output voltage and you have another uh, capacitor here right so if you just draw for example let's have a look at the you know output you know that side or that side uh, currents for example if you look at the currents drawn from the uh, source okay so let me draw uh, i s so this is our source whenever you know that switch is off you are not getting any current okay and whenever you turn on that switch okay so that IL let's say it is in the continuous conduction mode so it was carrying uh, some current and you are turning on that switch so you are charging your IS and it has you know that kind of characteristics okay and let's look at the you know the current here let's say this is I out of course you have the capacitance here so it filters out the real output current here but let's try to plot it there so that one has more or less like a uh, characteristics like that right depending on that one you have yes it is you know going up and down but actually you don't have really sharp edges like I mean for sharp edges I mean you have zero current here and it just jumps directly to here of course it is turn on and turn off time but due to that kind of and that kind of ripples okay if you take the Fourier transform or if you just make a hard switch we will talk about those things they can induce lots of you know EMI and voltage uh, harmonics in the uh, input side okay so it is never you don't have like a perfect uh, conductor or perfect voltage source so that kind of current ripples can affect for example if you have some kind of other converters in the circuit other I don't know sensitive equipment it can trigger some noise problems so buck converter is creating more noise at the input side but it is cleaner at the output side so let's look at the uh, boost topology okay so again let's look at the source side current what you are uh, affecting to the source side and what is your effect to your output side okay get rid of uh, myself so let's look at here so again if you look at that topology so now when you are closing that switch so this is is now let's say you are charging up and discharging and it goes like that so since you have the inductance here the current on that side will be more continuous again i am assuming uh, continuous conduction mode but even if it is like in the discontinuous conduction mode yes it can touch the zero but you don't have like that kind of uh, 90 degrees uh, current changes which can uh, trigger high frequency uh, voltage or current uh, problem uh, signal problems so if you look at the, the output okay yes you have the capacitance here but if you look at the here whenever you have uh, the current flowing through here you don't have any current uh, coming on to the output side so you have a more or less zero current and then you are you know you charge that inductor 
and then you close that switch okay you close that switch and then suddenly you just uh, create uh, some current there and then it starts decaying so it has you know that kind of characteristics here of the output so again you know due to that sharp rises and sharp falls actually it can create lots of emi problems at the noise so when you are designing that thing you shouldn't only think about the you know normal uh, electrolytic capacitor which can store energy for the operation of the uh, converter but you should also talk, think about like putting a high frequency filtering capacitors like uh, ceramic capacitors or you know something like that to you know to have those high current components to itself and you will not create any you know noise problems to the load side okay so let's uh, look at to the other one put it uh, me here so now we have the buck boost you know inverting buck boost converter let's say we have the not, not io let's say is okay and let's try to plot it here and once you again once you close that switch so you are you know creating some uh, current here okay then once you cut off that current it is coming back through here but that one you know that one is again dropping to zero like that right and if you look at the output current and in this case i will uh, define uh, the output current here again once it is being charged okay once it is being charged it is zero okay let's say this is io that is zero and then you just close that switch and all the current is coming back to here so it is kind of decaying so for the buck boost converter you know you have uh, like 90 degrees sharp edges both also in the input and on the output so you need to be careful like when choosing especially you know the capacitors on the both sides here you know the output can be more problematic so you need to be paying specific attention to the output filtering and for the buck buck can also trigger some noise problems on the input side so you know it is important to have that kind of knowledge and again i strongly advise you to have a look at that uh, reading material which uh, includes lots of useful information okay so those you know three topologies are the main topologies that we will discuss uh, this semester and from now on we will uh, discuss more on the practical applications of those converters but in the second uh, semester we will be continuing with other uh, topologies mainly you know isolating isolating uh, power converters so one of them if you are curious about those things you can have a look at that one like flyback uh, converter uh, juke converter sepi converter and other resonant converters will be the main uh, topics that we will cover in the second semester so in the you know next videos we will be talking about the uh, driving of the mosfets uh, snubbers or other harmonics as well and thermal design and that kind of issues okay thank you